Hey guys, everything known is on here. This is a creation evolution video. This is from ICR.org, Institute for Creation Research. New DNA study confirms Noah. That's interesting. Let's take a look at what it says. And it's, this is really cool stuff. This is leading edge uh, science happening by uh, scientists whose worldview uh, is not skewed, uh, it, you know, is not forced to believe millions of years. And so they can come to the conclusions that <clears throat> effectively uh, confirm the Bible just by looking at the, the data itself. Evolutionary teachings hold that all mankind arose from a population of ape-like ancestors from which chimpanzees also evolved. But Genesis, the rest of the Bible, and Jesus um, teach that all mankind arose from Noah's three sons and their wives. A new analysis of human mitochondrial DNA exposes two new evidences that validate the biblical beginnings of mankind. <clears throat> mitochondrial DNA comes from mothers. Mother egg cells transmit their mitochondrial DNA into cellular uh, mitochondria and every <clears throat> child born. This unique annex of DNA contains 16,569 bases, either adenine, guanine, uh, cystosine, or thymine, uh, AGCT, that's the whole Gattaca uh, sequence there, that encode vital cellular information like instruction, like an instruction manual. Scientists have been comparing the genetic differences between every major people group around the globe. How did those differences arise? <clears throat> Assuming that God placed the ideal mtDMA a DNA uh, sequence in Eve, Adam and Eve, the first uh, two humans, all those differences arose by mutation since the Genesis 3 curse, about 6,000 years ago, as the Bible says. Other scientists measure the rate at which these copying errors occur. Though very slow, we acquire about, four, about one mutation every six generations. This is what science uh, is able to uh, observe, demonstrate, and uh, repeat. <clears throat> A few dozen mutations could appear after several, several millennia several uh, thousands of years. This sets the stage for researchers to compare competing model predictions against the measured mitochondrial DNA differences. <clears throat> this is an interesting comparison between evolution and creation. Bible-believing molecular biologist Dr. Nathaniel Jensen downloaded publicly available human mitochondrial geno genome sequence data to do exactly that, publishing in Answers Research Journal. His results show that the number of today's uh, empty DNA differences exactly match the number predicted by the Bible's 6,000 years of human history. That's fascinating. So they know how many mutations occur um, in a generation, uh, for example. Uh, in, you know, in six generations, about one mutation occurs. That's what they uh, can confirm, they can observe and measure. <clears throat> And if you add up all the mutations based on that assumption um, for about 6,000 years, you come up with the a number of mutations that we uh, do see in the human genome. Whereas if there was millions of years, you would see far, far more mutations um, that would have already occurred. And you see the uh, chart here. Um, via evolution, um, the minimum prediction of uh, DNA differences was 681. Um, what uh, young earth creation uh, predicts is about 123. Uh, one mutation every six generations um, multiplied into the 6,000 year history as the Bible records it. And what do we see? Um, the genome, the, the DNA, actually shows us about 123 um, differences there. Um, exactly matches the number of predicted Bible 6,000 years of human history. Uh, Mitochondrial DNA from around the world shows no trace of 200,000 years or so years of worth of mutations that the evolutionary model predicts. Um, <clears throat> so science, observable, repeatable science, um, shows us that in fact the 6,000 year uh, timeline is about right. And the Bible uh, already said that basically. We know that um, because uh, we accept the Bible is true, um, but on the other hand, we all want to uh, see science confirm that, and science is indeed confirming six, about 6,000 years of man on Earth. <clears throat> Geneticists construct tree diagrams using software that places the most uh, similar genetic sequences near one another, and the most dissimilar sequences 
on long branches, Jensen found, Jensen Jensen, found that at least two distinct uh, patterns in the human A DNA tree uh, diagram that confirm Genesis. The center of the diagram shows three main chunks. Each reflects uh, a, scientific, a specific empty DNA sequence with only a handful of differences from the other two. Could these trunks represent the unique empty DNA from the wives of Shem, Ham, and Japheth? And uh, that is an uh, interesting uh, suggestion there. Let me, uh, I don't know if I can zoom this in here. It's not going to zoom in. Um, that's fine. <clears throat> a second pattern emerges that also fits the three wives' explanation, assuming uh, longer times between each generation, according to the biblical record of lifespans before the flood, and using today's slow mutation rate of um, the, the slow mutation rate, the 1656 years between Adam and Noah would have produced a small number of differences that short lines between each trunk represent. Jensen compared the small number of DNA differences between each trunk or central node with the relatively large number of differences in the branches. He noted uh, about 1,660 years passed from creation to the flood, whereas 4,365 years passed from the flood to the present age. And we're just about at the end of that age, as you know from all my prophecy videos. Uh, 2.6 to 1 time ratio. Consistent with this, the branches connecting the nodes to one another were uh, much shorter than the branches uh, spraying out from the nodes, as if the shorter branches represented pre-flood mutations and the long branches uh, represented post-flood mutations. Um, we would expect uh, that post-flood mutations increase because the time, uh, the lifespans decrease substantially from about 900 years. Uh, down to about uh, you know a hundred years and that's what we see pre-flood it was uh, very long hundreds of years of lifespan post-flood it's shortened right down to about a hundred years and uh, so you'd expect the mutations would uh, probably increase at that point and I think that's what uh, the science is confirming here <clears throat> it appears that modern genetic genetics confirms Genesis which says so Noah went out and his sons and his wives uh, with him this study uh, produced two Genesis confirming results. First, the human empty DNA tree has three trunks, which we expect, uh, which fits the Genesis model that all people descended from uh, three foundational mothers, the wives of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Second, 6,000 years of today's slow mutation rate would uh, exactly produce today's measured number of empty DNA differences. Genetics, again, confirms Genesis. Um, and uh, it's interesting to think that you know it nowhere it comes nowhere near the evolutionary prediction of mutations <clears throat> unless uh, mutations happened much much more slowly you know 200,000 years ago which uh, you know doesn't make a lot of sense um, but what we see is uh, you know numbers that confirm um, the Bible and the book of Genesis as historically accurate and uh, that's fascinating stuff and I, I can't believe that uh, Evolutionists don't see this uh, this stuff. It's right in front of them. If this is observable, repeatable stuff, this is direct evidence of a young Earth, and uh, that Genesis was true. So you can trust in your Bible. It's amazing stuff. And uh, check out the article. As always, I'll put it in the description there, and you can read it for yourself. <clears throat> and please share it around. Please share the video around, and uh, please uh, give me the thumbs up and subscribe if you appreciate these videos. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.